Hello and welcome back to Planet 40k. In today's video we're going to be reviewing the Deathwing Knights from the Dark Angel Supplement. So this was actually voted on by our YouTube polls. So we've got 55% of the vote. So keep your eyes out for future polls that will be within your homepage and your subs box. I will be frequently asking for polls to be done. And those polls then dictate what videos we do on the channel. Another way of getting to the polls is by clicking on the Planet 40k homepage on YouTube and then clicking the community tab and that will take you to the polls. And while you're there, if you'd like to have a look at the members area, you just click the join button for more information. As for the shout out of the day, it's going to go to Matt Foss. He's loving the Dark Angels content. So shout out to you, Matt. To the Deathwing Knights. They're coming at 11 power level or 47 points per man. And they're going to come in the elite section of the codex. As for the keywords of note, they are Deathwing Knights. They're part of the Deathwing, of course. They're a core unit with the inner circle ability. They're a Terminator unit and an infantry. As for their stat line, they've got a movement of 5 inch, weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 3, attacks 2, leadership 8 and a 2 plus save. So the majority of that is what you'd expect from a Terminator model, except these guys are hitting on 2s. And the Nightmaster will have an additional attack and an extra point in leadership, bringing the total leadership value of the unit to a leadership value of 9. On to the abilities, so the Dark Angels chapter tactic which is Grim Resolve. So if they remain stationary, they're going to get a plus one to their attacks hit rolls. Now, as these guys are a melee unit, it's only going to happen in the second round of combat. They've then got the Super Doctrine, which is Sons of the Lion. They're going to have the Implacable ability, which is in the Assault Doctrine. Any Deathwing Infantry unit that makes a melee attack against a character. Or a model that's got a wound characteristic of eight or more, they can re-roll the wound rolls. Not too bad for Deathwing in general, because you can be using three of the battle rounds for the Assault Doctrine. Next they've got the Angels of Death ability, so Shock Assault in particular is going to come in handy for that. Then they can Combat Squad, so if you take a max unit of them they can be split into half on deployment and then you can have two lots of five running separately. Of course though the Knight Master will only be within one of those units after they've been split up. So one of the units will be leadership value of nine and the other one will be leadership value of eight. And of course the extra attack and the special weapon that he carries will only be in one of those units. We'll get onto that in the weapons section. They've then got teleport strikes, so they're effectively deep striking in from reinforcements in your movement phase from turn two onwards, more than nine inches away from enemy models. They've got inner circle because they've got the Grim Resolve chapter tactic, so they auto pass morale tests. But the most important part of this is that each time an attack is made against this unit and it has the infantry keyword, which it does, then any unmodified wound roll of a one, two or three will always fail, irrespective of any other weapon abilities. So effectively this is transhuman physiology, you need a four plus just to wound them. On to the war gear then, the Knight's Master is equipped with the Flail of Unforgiven and a Storm Shield, then all the other guys have got the Mace of Absolution and a Storm Shield. So let's check out the Knight Master's melee weapon first, the Flail of Unforgiven. It's a strength plus 2 making it a strength 6, minus 3 AP and 2 damage. And of course in the Assault Doctrine it's going to go to a minus 4 AP. The most important part of this weapon is each time an attack is made with the weapon, any excess damage is not lost, it instead goes on to the next model within the targeted unit. So that means it's not just an elite killer, it's also an anti-infantry because even if you're going against gaunts, and let's say you get three wounds that go through, all at damage two, that's going to be six gaunts gone, whereas normally it will just be three. Now the Knight Master himself has three attacks and he can have one for the Shock Assault as well if he's charged or was charged. And he's hitting on two, so he's quite likely to be hitting all of them. So against infantry, he's going to be wounded on threes. So you probably see a couple of wounds to get through there. As for the other weapon that the unit carries is the Mace of Absolution. It's strength times two, so this time it's a strength eight weapon, minus two AP and three damage. And of course, minus three AP in the Assault Doctrine. So these ones are the elite killers. They're also very good against your vehicles as well, especially those toughness seven vehicles because you're gonna be wounding them on threes. And in particular, if you're using that super doctrine where you can re-roll the wound rolls against models that have got a wounds characteristic of eight or more, or their characters, that's gonna really help against those tanks. Dreadnoughts too, I guess. Now these guys only have two attacks each, but three if they're on the charge, or they were charged. As for the Storm Shields, we probably all know what these are, but I'll go through it anyway. They get a 4 plus in Vulnerable save, and in addition it's going to be a plus 1 to the armor save. Now they've already got a 2 plus armor save, but any minus AP weapons will obviously be nullified by this extra plus 1 to the save. So for example, a minus 1 AP weapon is still going to give them a 2 plus armor save because of the Storm Shield. Now there is an upgrade option within the unit, which is 5 points, it's called the Watcher in the Dark. It's a Dark Angel specific upgrade. Once per battle, the unit can attempt to deny the Witch as if it was a Psyker, and if you're going against a Chaos Psyker, you can re-roll the Deny the Witch test. So the little model you can see here in the circle signifies what the Watcher in the Dark is. Azrael also has one of these, if you select to take one with Azrael as well. But 5 points, it's not too bad, especially against those Psychic Forces such as Thousand Suns, Tyranids. 
death guard, things like that. So let's look at some stratagems that can work well with the unit. So they've got a special stratagem called no foe, too great to subdue. It's two command points used in the fight phase. When a Deathwing Knight unit from the army is chosen to fight, until the end of the phase, each model in the Deathwing Knight's unit that make attack with a Mace of Absolution against a vehicle or a monster, you're going to get a plus one to the attack's wound rolls, and the armor penetration characteristic will have gone up by one as well. So those Maces are going to be a minus three AP now, and you're very likely wounded on twos. Unless it's one of those bigger tanks like Land Raiders and whatnot. But it's still a pretty decent stratagem to have up your sleeve. Next you've got Line Unbreakable which is quite a common Dark Angel stratagem to use. Especially for melee units. So long story short, only the first row of the enemy unit can fight. Normally it's two rows because if they be within half an inch of another model that's within half an inch. But it effectively takes away that second row which is going to then take away a lot of the attacks from the enemy unit. So for example, if you're surrounded by a lot of Orc Boys perhaps... That's going to be a lot of attacks coming in. But if you're removing any other rows behind and only taking hits from the first row, that's going to massively aid your survivability. Next, you've got Marked for Command. So use this stratagem before the battle. You can select your Knight Master model to have one of the special issue relics that are within the supplements. There's only two that will apply here with either the Master Crafted Weapon or Digital Weapons. Now, the Digital Weapons, each time the bearer fights, you can make an additional attack. And if that attack scores a hit, the target suffers one mortal wound. Or you can take the Master Crafted Weapon and you're going to be adding one to the damage characteristics of your weapon. So now that flail is going to be damage three instead of damage two. You've got Fury of the First, which is in the Space Marines Codex. Done in the shooting phase or the fight phase, well, obviously you're going to use it in the fight phase here. Each time a Terminator model makes an attack, you're going to plus one to your attack's hit rolls. So if you've not got any buffing characters nearby, you can use this stratagem instead. Now of course you already hit on twos, but if there's any negative modifiers to your hit rolls, then this is going to nullify that. Then finally, adaptive strategy to turn on all the doctrines for a core unit for a turn. So you could be turned on the assault doctrine even though it's turn two, because usually that would be the tactical doctrine. So if you want the extra AP, turn this one on and away you go. As for some unit synergy, now you can take Bilal, Grandmaster of the Deathwing. He's got that ability named after himself. Any core units within six inches can reroll with the hit rolls. So with all those attacks hitting on two, rerolling could be pretty decent. We've actually already reviewed Belial last month, so if you haven't checked that one out yet, feel free to have a look at that one. Similarly, you could just take a Deathwing Captain, You've got the rights of Battalora, units within 6 inches will reroll hit rolls of a 1. Belial actually also has that one as well, but if you prefer a bit more of a customised generic Captain, you can go with this one. Everybody's favourite, the Apothecary, this one's a Deathwing variant, with his combat restoratives, so at the end of the movement phase you can heal any model D3 wounds, and with the Narthesium Aura, any infantry within 3 inches of this model is going to have a 6 plus feel no pain save, so on your Terminators with the Inner Circle ability already, so they can't be wounded on less than a 4, then add in the 6 plus feel no pain save as well, that makes them really tanky. You can turn this guy into a Chief Apothecary as well, so instead of having D3 lost wounds recovered, you can have it as a flat 3, you can also give him a Warlord trait and a Relic as well. The Warlord trait in particular is very good because he's actually got a stratagem that allows him to bring models back every turn, which is a combat revival stratagem, especially when these guys are 47 points per model. So you can bring one back every turn and it'll be free of charge if you take that Warlord trait. Normally it would be one command point. You can then take a Librarian in Terminator armor. You can use the Veil of Time. So this is actually going to be really handy because you're going to reroll that charge roll when you come in from Deep Strike and you'll be fighting first in later fight phases. Either one of those bullet points are going to work well with your Deathwing Knights. You could take one of the Dark Angel's psychic abilities, which is Righteous Repugnance, which is a blessing, warp charge value of 7. You select a Dark Angel's friendly unit within 12 inches of the Psyker, and until the next psychic phase, each time a model makes a melee attack, you can reroll the hit rolls and the wound rolls. So I think that one's outrageous. Now, in the Assault Doctrine, you are already rerolling the wound rolls against certain things, but this one gives you rerolling hits and wounds with everything. That's, I think that's pretty good. You can take a Terminator Chaplain or Interrogator Chaplain in Terminator Armor. He's going to have the Listening of Hate, so you can reroll all your hit rolls. He could have the Exhortation of Rage, so you can add one to your attack's wound rolls. Or the Canticle of Hate to add two to your charge rolls and an extra three inch piling and consolidation move. So any of those characters combined with your Deathwing Knights is going to be really handy. The final bit of synergy here is just Land Raiders in general. You can put your guys in Land Raiders if you don't want to deep strike up the board. Now it is quite expensive. I do believe that Land Raiders are going to come down slightly in points with the new chapter approved. I still think it's quite expensive to be putting these guys in but you do need a way of getting into combat and deep striking isn't always the best way because making a 9 inch charge is against the odds. So let's move into the summary starting with the good it's a very tanky unit armor save of 2, 4 plus in one save with the storm shield you can't wound them on less than a 4 plus they're going to be hitting on 2s in melee in fact they're very strong in melee in general 
with strength 8 weapons and that flail of the unforgiven to throw excess wounds onto other models. They've got the teleport strike ability which is pretty big because it's going to really make your opponent think about how they're going to deploy. They need to screen off a lot of areas of the board. You can deny the witch with that watcher in the dark upgrade if you wanted it. It's only 5 points. Can be useful in some games, in other ones not so much. And they're core, so they're going to synergize quite well with a lot of buffs, a lot of characters and a lot of stratagems. As for some of the bad, they've only got a 5 inch movement. Yes they do deep strike, but once they have deep struck in, they've only got a 5 inch movement. So, so getting into a second charge could be quite difficult. They can be quite pricey as well, 47 points a man, or a minion of 5 is going to be 235 points. They've got no range attacks, the other terminator units do have, which is range capabilities with storm bolters and whatnot. So if they do fail their charge in particular, they're not attacking with anything. They don't gain the objective secured with first company as they've not got the right keywords because they've not got the terminator squad keyword. They do have the terminator keyword but it's not terminator squad or relic terminator squad or assault terminator squad. So they're not going to gain the objective secured with that first company. And then the main issue here is just getting them into combat as mentioned already. A 9 inch charge from deep strike sometimes can be unreliable. So let's move on to the rating then. We're giving the Deathwing Knights a planet 40k rating of 4.5 out of 5. Once they are in combat, they're very useful. They're going to be bringing anything down to its knees. Just getting them in there is the issue. Guys, if you're enjoying the Dark Angel supplement reviews, drop a sub below. And remember to like the video on the way out. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.